Hey guys, Riley Bowman here, concealedcarry.com. And actually, this is our first stop of the week at SHOT Show on the floor. So really excited to have Trevor Rowe with me from Shadow Systems. And Trevor is gonna to introduce to us the MR920, just released. In fact, your press release just went right. out yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, or two days ago. Before. Yep. Yeah, so brand new upgrades, improvements, just right. a year after the launch of the MR918. Correct, yeah, so very soon after. You guys are moving quickly. Yeah, we're a little unconventional in that sense, <laughs> that's right. Which is awesome, and you have some really exciting new features with the 920 series yeah, here. that's right. So what do we got? Cool, so um, let's first start with the 918. So the yeah. 918, we launched at SHOT Show last year. Very successful, there's one here. Um, so the, the 918 really was designed from the ground up to incorporate all the features that we thought made the most sense for a pistol that could kind of do everything for you. So that could be you know, concealed carry, small enough to conceal, but still you know, formidable as an accurate and fast shooting, flat shooting pistol. So it still makes sense as a duty gun, still makes sense as a home defense gun. Um, to kind of to kind of cover all those roles, and so we called it the MR Multi Roll 918, nine millimeter, really designed in 2018. Gotcha. Yep. So the 918 was great. It was tremendously successful. Nothing wrong with it. We found ourselves in duty holsters. We found ourselves in all kinds of really cool places. Um, the market responded very well, and they they get what we're doing. Dude, but, it's pretty legit. When within a year of releasing yeah. a product, I see your stuff on the shelves at Bass Pro Shops. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, and a lot of that just had to do with the, with the value. You know, we were yeah. trying to release an American-made pistol at a with all these custom features at a price point that was really unbeatable. That was really the goal, right? Um, so over time, though, you know, there were a few customers that said, "Hey, you know, even though the 918 has a big beaver tail, I'm still getting slide bite." And they show us these massive hands, and we're like, "Wow!" <laughs> right? Right. Um, or we had people say that you know the corners of the slide dug into them a little bit. Mm. We also had people say, "Gosh, I wish I could mount." Um, another style of optic, like a Vortex or a Loophole. Mm. So the 918 was cut with an RMR footprint. We cut it right into the slide, which meant that you can mount the optic really low and be very strong. But there were people raising their hands. And so uh, I think a lot of the big companies, you know, they'll, they'll wait five or 10 years before they do anything about that stuff. Um, but we decided that since we make our own stuff and we engineer our own stuff, we could iterate quickly and produce the 920, okay? So the 920 is very similar to the 918 in size, but we've added several little subtle features and one really big one that make the 920, I think, the best striker-fired polymer handgun on the market, period. Okay? Right. And I, I say that, you know, I, I, I'm not normally one to boast, and I'm very proud of what we're doing, but I, I really believe that's true. And for those of you that shot it at range day yesterday, I'm hoping you kind of saw the vision there. So the MR920 frame is kind of the core of, of what makes it so controllable and so shootable. Um, the 918 was great, but the 920 is a little better. So what did we do? We added a large recoil control ledge right there, so you can actually see there's a very deep recess for your non-firing hand thumb. If you shoot thumbs forward, you now have a surface to really engage with your, the bone of your thumb, which is one of, is the strongest, it is the strongest hand in your, or finger in your hand, so why not use it, right? Uh, we've got the, the trigger guard reprofiled because we discovered that even though the 918 is designed to fit Glock 19 holsters, there were still cases where guys' holsters were too tight in that area. Yeah. So we basically created space for the gun. Okay? Gotcha. Um, we also knocked off the back corners of the slide. This was where people were saying the slide was digging into their side. So we just basically, again, moved things down a little bit and created really space. Cool. And it looks cool too. I like it. Yeah. Um, the RMR footprint was, again, what we were doing before, but we said, okay, we want to we wanna have a multi-footprint system. The problem is most of those multi-footprint systems either put the optic very high, or if it's low, right. they use really short screws. Yep. And so we looked at this and said, you know what, the real problem is we need to redesign the slide internals. Hmm. So we relocated the, the depressor plunger assembly for the extractor, moved it forward, and now we have screws that go almost all the way down to the bottom no of the kidding. slide. I did not realize that. Yeah. After seeing this yesterday, I did not realize that's what you did. Yes. That's insane. Yes. So now we've, re awesome. we've redesigned the operating system with zero impact reliability. We've proven that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we just, we just set screws now that go to the very bottom of the slide. So some of them are almost an inch long. And they're all, they're all 640s. So they're very large diameter on a relative scale. So now we can direct connect with no foot extra little intervening adapter plates or anything. We can direct connect, uh, you know, RMR, Holosun, Loophole Delta Point Pro, the Vortex Viper. Uh, we've tested some other ones. There's some True Glow optics that fit. Um, there are a few that don't, 
but sure. in general, you now are covering most of your options in the market with a connection that is actually stronger even than the 918s was. And again, no adapter plates, none of that nonsense. Yeah, no that adapter really plate. Remarkable. Yeah. So I'll tell you, that one feature right there is when I was shooting this yesterday and I started learning about it more, I was like, that, that's that's why I'm here first thing this morning yeah. because I think that is one of the most exciting, in, you know, innovative things I've seen, that I'm I think I'm going to see this show. I think it so is. Good job. It's it's patent pending, so we're excited about that. Um, I I will say, you know, we were we were really hard on ourselves to make sure that we designed a system that would hold a zero well and that would live up to our expectations, that would at least match the performance yeah. of what we had done before, um, and I think we actually exceeded that in the testing we've done hitting optics with dead blow hammers and putting them in vices and wrenching on them and everything, we actually saw that this system provided more stability than anything else that we were experimenting with, including some of our older cuts and others in the market. So um, I think it's going to be a really big deal. That's now, awesome. understand this, the 918 is still a fabulous pistol and all the customer feedback will, you know, will, will show you that. I mean, the guns are all over the place and they're being used hard in a variety of places. Um, but the 920 is just kind of the next level, and I think yeah. I think for most shooters, especially new shooters who are learning proper technique, you know, I think the frame is very conducive to good technique, and it's going to be a really good addition to our product line. Yeah, tell us uh, about the redesigned beaver tail on this one. Oh yeah, so other frame features. Well, let's first go back. So we've we've um, retained the interchangeable backstrap system of the 918. So our backstrap approach is very different. Our joke is we don't care how big your hands are. So small, medium, and large, that's, I don't think that's the right conversation. It's about natural point. So we call this the NPOA system, natural point of aim. Basically, each backstrap changes the angle of the grip. Yeah. So if you're a Glock shooter, you're gonna want what we call the high, which is not physically high, but actually makes the muzzle point high. Right. It's, you know, we have high, neutral, and low based upon where you want the muzzle to orient. So the, the backstrap system is still there. The texture is still there. We've designed this texture with EDC in mind. So it's, it gives you tremendous grip, but it's not too rough to be against your body. It doesn't wear holes in your clothing. Um, we've also used a newer technology for how the, the mold is manufactured. So the texture wraps really far around the grip. So you get a real custom feel. A lot of times when guns have texture on them, it's in these small, relatively flat panels. So we've got, yep. we've got that going for us. Yep. We got this interchange or this removable magwell rather that comes with the gun. So, so you get a magwell if you want to add it, great. If you want to just use the existing and fairly generous internal magwell, you can do that too. Um, and then up here, the, the uh, beaver tail has been changed in the 920. So, Again, we had a beaver tail that was relatively larger than most stock guns on the 918. And then, uh, like I said, some guys had these massive hands, right? So, so we extended it a little bit, but we did it intelligently. A lot of times if you, if you increase the length of a beaver tail, you actually will inadvertently raise the gun in, in someone's hand. And we don't want to do that because we're all about recoil control. So we tighten this radius up here a little bit, and then we knock these corners off. So if you look at our beaver tail, you can see that those corners are absent. And that just means that areas of your hand that don't need protection aren't raising the gun in your hand. So it's a way of maintaining that low grip. We also upswept it a little bit, which most beaver tails aren't like that. We swept it back toward the slide a little tiny bit. So when you're driving your hand toward the gun, especially in a messy IWB kind of scenario, mm. it just gives you a little more forgiveness on that target. Mm. So you have a little bigger target for your hand to guide onto your beaver tail. And I think that's why I say it's intelligently designed. We didn't just make it big to be big. We made it larger, but with other intelligent design features yeah. that improve performance. So. Man, that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, now, for some of our viewers, this may be the first time they're even hearing of shadow systems yeah. or seeing one of your guns. So uh, any changes in the trigger? And can you tell us about the trigger uh, system in, in this gun. This yeah. is your trigger, right? Right, so, so philosophically, we believe that guns should be reliable first. Um, most of us are former military or LE or competitive shooters, and in all of those places, reliability is like the foundation of everything. Yeah. Uh, and there are a lot of guns that kind of look like this gun that are notoriously unreliable, right? When we design our pistols, we took the best design features out of the custom world and brought them into a truly combat-worthy handgun, and we left everything else behind that we didn't think belonged. Mm -hmm. So, as an example, we use stock weight springs throughout. We leave all the take up and over travel in the trigger. It's an improved trigger. It's a machined aluminum flat face trigger. It's got great tactile reset. It's got a really crisp break. It's about four pounds. It's a little lighter, but we didn't push the limit too far to where it's not safe for appendix carry or something like sure. that, right? So all the internal safeties are intact and our philosophy is the guns need to run first. So that's the design change for the trigger really in the 20, 920 was 
we smoothed it up a little bit. We had some people complain that the 918 felt a little gritty to them, so we made some, some uh, improvements to the internal components, which just smoothed it up a little bit. But uh, in terms of weight, it's about the same. Brakes about four, maybe four and a half pounds at the most. That's very nice, man. Yep. It's very, very, very nice. Now, oh. price. Yeah, price. So and I think people will be surprised by this. Yeah, so, so I think that's a good point. Um, so let's actually maybe back up for a moment. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different variations of the MR920. Um, we have what we call a combat version. So if you want a more basic slide cut that is still front and rear directional serrations, by the way, directional in the sense that when you pull it out of a holster, there's no resistance. But when you are, excuse me, when you are pulling the slide to the rear, you have a, a very aggressive set of serrations for your hand, okay? Yeah. So we still have you know, these, these directional serrations. Um, we certainly have the, all the optic mounting options. Um, the uh, green outline tritium front. I mean, all the features I just went over are still here. The big changes are just there's a little bit less slide machining on a combat version. Um, we, the most base model with no optic cut in the combat variant starts around 799. That's crazy. Okay? So, and what we usually say is you can take a stock gun and by the time you put a trigger and a set of sights on it, you're past our price point. And this has got everything out of the box and it works and it's backed up by us. Um, and it's got many other features like the interchangeable backstrap and the magwell and the, the list goes on, right? Gotcha. So the combat starts at $799. If you add an optic cut, it's about 60 bucks more. Um, and then the guns top out at around $1,000. Um, and that would be for like the fully loaded one that we looked at a moment ago that has um, an optic cut, the slide machining and so forth. I should point out, people see this kind of slide machining and they think, oh, well that, you know, maybe that's not as reliable and that's not, you know, I don't know if that's a combat gun. Um, they see the window cut and they think, well, that's debris is going to get in there. And the reality is most of the torture testing we've done has been with window cut guns, just to kind of prove the point that it really doesn't matter. You can look at that as a way to, for debris to get in, but you can also look at that as a way for debris to get out. Yep. And I also point out usually, look, the Beretta 92 is all window, yep. you know, or uh, many Glock handguns and the, the uh, longer slide ones have had windows on the top yep. forever. So, so well, don't be dissuaded by that. And longtime listeners of my podcast know that I, I'm big about saying cleaning, is optional, lubrication is mandatory. I agree, I agree, run the guns wet. I, I totally agree. Um, so anyway, the, the most premium version has the optic cut, window cut, slide lightning, and other things. You'll find that the recoil impulse on the Elite guns, which is the fully loaded version, the Elite gun recoil impulse is, um, the sights track a little bit faster, just because we've reduced the reciprocating mass and right. balanced a few other things. Um, but, I mean, they all shoot so flat, and that's really our kind of claim to fame. It is the flattest shooting production polymer pistol in the world. I mean, it's, they are flat, man. And so. as we've been running some of the B-roll, me shooting this, yeah. uh, I think you probably see that. See that. It's, uh, these are great shooting guns. Yep. They're great running. They, great, they feel great. I mean, especially, I'm a guy that actually switches back and forth pretty well, almost okay. equally between like a SIG and a Glock. Okay. Right? Mostly just because I've learned what that feels like, and I yeah. know when I grab that gun, I know how it points. But Maybe knowing that I can just very simply swap out a back strap and just, you know what, make this shoot more like make, the SIG. Make them all be the same. You know? yeah, that's, yeah. That's really cool. The way, the way we actually uh, describe it in our manual is we say take the gun, obviously, you know, clear it, make sure you don't have any ammunition, all that good stuff. And then put the first back strap on of your choosing. You know, look at something across the room, a light switch on the wall, something in a safe direction. Right. Close your eyes and press the gun out and see where you are. Do it a few times. And you'll find you're probably consistently high or consistently low. Yep. And, then, and then change to the next one and find a backstrap where when you orient the gun without looking on a target, you're right where you want, for, want to be from an elevation perspective. And then that's the backstrap you should use because when you're under stress and it's dark and you're scared, I mean, you're just going to push and point in a lot of in a lot of cases, and you want to have as much uh, control over where those rounds go as possible. So it's just a way of kind of like tuning the gun into your natural intuition of where it's pointing. Yeah. Um, and that makes it kind of novel and cool. So. Super cool, guys. I mean, you've built an amazing pistol with a lot of features yeah. for a price that's half, even more than yeah. half off of yeah. what yeah. some other competing and options they, are out run. there. So they congratulations run. to you and your team, Trevor. Thank you. This is remarkable. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Here today, guys, go check it out. Look up is it Shadow Systems? Uh, it's Shadow Systems Corp. C O R P. dot com. Shadow That's Systems why Corp. dot com. 
shadowsystemscorp.com to learn more. And cool. you'll probably find these soon on some shelves. Yeah, so so we are, uh, they're in full production now. Um, we anticipate shipments are gonna really start kind of this week or beginning cool. of February, sort of in that time frame. We wanna make sure that, you know, when we, we take manufacturing very seriously, so um, there's a lot of steps on quality, especially when a new product is coming out. There are companies, I think, that release products prematurely and they let the market test, them, test sure. it for them. And we just take what we do so seriously. We believe that every gun we sell can be used to, to save someone's life. And so um, we, we just want to make sure that what we're putting out is good. But we've gone through all the testing. They're in production now. And we think, you know, first week of February, they'll probably be starting to hit shelves. Fantastic. Cool. Awesome. Go check it out. All right, thanks.